1. This was years ago. I must have been about four years old at the time. I remember it was a nice sunny day, either late spring or early summer. My brother and I were outside, like any other nice day, playing, when we got a couple visitors. The young girl and her mother were introduced to us as our auntie and our cousin, Angel. Angel was a bit older than I was at the time. Pretty girl with blonde hair wearing a blue dress with flowers in it. All three of us were outside doing what young children do, playing, riding our big wheels, and being happy children enjoying the sunshine. We had a nice big yard on top of a pretty big hill on a dirt road, so we had lots of room to play away from the road. We watched as a truck pulled up the street and stopped right in the middle of the road. Two men were inside the truck, and they yelled for Angel to come down that they had some money for her. My brother and I told her she shouldn't go down there, but I guess she wanted the money that they said they had for her. She went down the steps to the road and up to the side of the truck, and the driver leaned out the open window and just lifted her up and pulled her through the window and handed her off to the second man. I heard her yell and scream that she didn't want to go, as they just sped off up the road. I ran inside to tell my grandma what had happened, and was met with a peculiar sight. My grandma, who was a sizable woman, was in the kitchen wrestling with my auntie over a bottle of pills. Grandma told me to just go back outside. She was busy, and little girls didn't need to see what was happening. The next thing I know, police officers were at my house. I thought they were there to try to find my cousin, who I had just seen kidnapped, but no. They were leading my auntie away in handcuffs, down my steps and out to their car on the road. No one ever spoke of this again, and I've never seen my cousin nor my auntie ever again. Two. This happened in January of 1990. I was 14 at the time. My mother and I were in my bedroom, sitting on my bed, just talking about normal teenage drama, when a huge black cat with the largest eyes I have ever seen just strolls out of my closet and got onto my bed. This in itself wasn't abnormal as I did have cats, and yes, even a black cat at the time. But this cat wasn't one of my kitties, and it couldn't have come from outside as the house was closed up and weatherized for cold winter months. So, needless to say, it was a bit unnerving. But then it looked at us, and it said, Child, child, child. My mother and I just looked at each other in shock. And then back at the cat, who just calmly sat there for a moment longer, before getting off the bed and returning to the closet. Needless to say, we hightailed it out of my bedroom and refused to go back in, or even sleep that night. The next day I still had to go to school, so I went to school still a bit shaken up about the previous night's events. I confided in a few friends who didn't really believe a word I had said about it. But honestly, who would believe a cat spoke? The day progressed quite normally. After lunch I was saying goodbye to my then boyfriend, outside of my choir class, when another student decided to punch him right in the face. I'm not sure why this happened. It was quite unexpected and out of character. My next class was algebra, and I walked in, noticed I needed to sharpen a pencil, so I left my seat to go to the pencil sharpener, got a nice point on it, and returned to my seat. And when I sat down, my knee decided to not cooperate with the rest of my body, and dislocate itself to the back of my leg. I tried and tried to get up out of the floor, but my poor leg just wouldn't work. The teacher asked if something was wrong, and I just said my knee is out. He said don't try to move, and ran to get help. His idea of help, however, was the football coaches who just gazed down at me, and agreed that, yeah, my knee was out. So they went and got the nurse, who, again, agreed my knee was out. She gets the vice principal, who also agrees that, yeah, my knee is definitely out. Finally, my mother is called, and when she arrives, an ambulance is finally called out. 
When we get home, my mother receives a phone call from my auntie telling her that her son had gotten pretty banged up that day in a fistfight. For years we figured that the cat had forewarned us of the three injuries to occur to children that next day. But now that I am a full-grown 41-year-old woman, I do wonder, as I have three children and unable to have any more. 3. This was in 2003 when I first went to a university in Holland as an international student. Let me be honest, the freedom of being out of the sight of my parents and being able to do certain things that would be illegal in my own country is incredible. I'm talking about weed and other stuff. I chose to go to school on foot every day so I could enjoy the view of the streets, etc. One afternoon, a guy stopped me and said hello. I greeted back and he asked me for my number. I wasn't comfortable giving it to him. Neither did I want to use my prepaid minutes with a stranger. So I lied that I didn't have a phone. Well, with my luck, you guessed it, my phone rang, so he insisted on having my phone number. I was a bit caught off guard, so I gave it to him and hoping that he'd never call me. I totally forgot about the whole thing after a while. About a couple of weeks later, I received a phone call from an unknown number. I answered right away for I just got in a group project in school with a few classmates, whom I just gave my number to. With a thick African accent, he asked me out. I agreed since one of my classmates had the same accent. I thought it was him. I went, and then this guy came over and said hi. I didn't even recognize him. I said hi back and still looking for my classmate. I know, I know, I was dumb. It then was like a brick hit my head. Anyway, I went with him thinking, hey, we are going to a public place and it is a bright day. What could happen? Don't judge me. We were all once young and stupid. He took me to a coffee shop. I knew what it was. But I wanted to try out my freedom, so he took me to a private room. A room filled with his, I assume, friends, who were smoking already. He asked me what I wanted to drink. I ordered an energy drink, then sat down. One of his friends and him started talking in their language and pointing at me from time to time. One guy lit a joint up and passed it to me. I asked what it was, he said marijuana. Again, just to fulfill my curiosity and enjoy my freedom, I smoked. Only after a few sips, I started not feeling well. It was my first time, but I had friends told me how they felt when they get high. And how I felt was absolutely not how I was told. Definitely not high. I started feeling sleepy, seeing things blurry and very weak. I passed the joint back, and I noticed that no one smoked it. I drank some energy drink and answered an incoming call. My friend started yelling at me when she found out that I was at a coffee shop, along with a bunch of strangers smoking weed, if that was weed. She told me there was a big chance I wasn't smoking weed at all, so just get out of there. I decided to leave while I still could. I rushed out, and immediately that guy followed me and offered to take me home. I refused politely, but he kept walking after me. The physical weakening feeling hit me harder and harder. Knowing this guy was behind me, I knew I could not lead him to where I lived. Also, I needed a much closer and safe place to lay down ASAP. I decided to go to my girlfriend's house. It was like a 10 minute walk, but seemed like forever. I knocked hard and urgently. She opened the door, and then I just said a few words like, let me sleep, then I blanked out. I woke up and was told I slept for four hours. I still don't know what I smoked, but I think I was very lucky. So to my friend who offered the freedom, let us not meet again. Four. Yes, yeah, still in Holland. I used to go to local churches on Sundays. Not that I could understand the Dutch sermon, I just wanted to see the buildings, listen to hymns in a different language, and learn things in a different perspective. One Sunday morning, I went to a church located in the center of a small town, called Daventer at 7. That's right, 7 in the morning, of a Sunday. I could not sleep more and felt lonely. I sat on a rock in front of the church while waiting in the cold air, a bicycle passed by. I looked at the person and smiled. He stopped and came back. He said something I did not understand, 
It was not Dutch and definitely not English. It turned out he was Russian and also a little Italian. Anyhow, without any way to communicate, I just wanted to be left alone. Instead, he decided to stay with me until the church opens. That was a little awkward, though at that moment I thought it was sweet. It was three long and cold hours. There were a few times he took his jacket off and put it over my shoulders. I didn't want to be rude, but the way he did was a tight hug from behind, so I refused politely each time. When the church opened, I felt finally released, but nope, he didn't leave. He came in with me and sat right next to me. About twenty minutes after the sermon started, he decided to leave, I whispered goodbye, but he took my hand and pulled me out. I thought it was strange and sort of rude to walk through people during the service, but I did not want to make a scene. When we got out, he asked me to sit on his bicycle with body language. I said I wanted to go back in. Suddenly he spoke English. You don't understand Dutch anyway, why stay? I should have been more alert than this. I just said I enjoy things I don't understand. He would not take no for an answer, and my mood for church was pretty much ruined anyhow. So yes, I sat on his bicycle and again being stupid. He took me to a place I have never been. It was a big building and there were many rooms in it. It looked like a shelter from World War II. I then found it was a temporary dorm building for refugees. He led me to a room with a blonde lady in it who was taking care of a baby while she was smoking. I don't know why, but I felt a little better when I saw a lady. But again, she understood me not a bit. Neither could I understand her while they were talking with laughter. After being ignored for about 15 minutes, I said I needed to go. He then took me to another room, which was filled with middle-aged men. One gentleman spoke English, so we chatted a bit. He asked me lots of questions about how I met him, how long we've known each other. I told the truth about we've just met. Then he looked puzzled. He said he was told I was his girlfriend. After clearing up the facts, I said I really needed to go. The last room we went had ten lockers and ten beds. He sat down in one bed, took off his jacket and lit a cigarette. He tapped the bed and tried to get me to sit with him. I felt extremely uncomfortable, for we are now all alone, disregard the fact that he was completely ignoring me while talking to the lady, about me in a language I could not understand, and telling the older gentleman lies about me. I said firmly I needed to go. He then said, let me finish the smoke, in fluent English. I know I should have gone already, but... Knowing it was a long way, and most likely, I may not be able to find my way back, I waited again. When he finished his cigarette, he did not have any intention to move. I decided that I am walking out of there. But then what he did really freaked me out. He came after me, and literally grabbed me, and lifted me from behind, and then carried me back to his bed. That's when I realized shit could happen any minute, and it would be difficult to defend myself. I sat there shocked while still trying to calm myself down. And think, is there a way I could get out of there? He then smiled with a gold tooth. I will take you back, just be patient. That moment was scary, in a quite dramatic way. He then held my hand again and said, let's go back. He asked me where I lived. I told him to just take me back to the church. He did. He gave me a kiss and left. I want to thank you for not hurting me, but let's never meet again. 5. For background, I'm a 23-year-old male, I'm 5'6", and I'm pretty slim too. Anyways, this happened around August 2015. My newborn son was about 4 days old when he woke up, around 1am with a slight fever. I told my wife I'd go get the medicine from the pharmacy, but because it was really late, the only 24-7 pharmacy was about 10 miles away, so I got in my car and started driving. On the main street that takes you to the pharmacy, there is also a hospital and some offices on the right side. As I was driving past the offices, I noticed that there was something in my lane. As I got closer, it looked like a female human head with blonde hair. I switched lanes and kept driving, but got kind of disturbed wondering if it was really what I thought it was. I got to the pharmacy and picked up the medicine. 
I also called my wife and told her what I saw. She told me to drive back around the suburb, but being the lazy piece of ass that I am, I drove back home the same way. As I drove past the head, I realized that it was in fact a female's head, but I wasn't sure if it was real or not. I was so disturbed that I missed the exit to the street that would take me home, so I kept driving for about a half mile, where there was another street in downtown that would take me to my street. So, made a right. But as soon as I did, an old pickup truck came out of the library's parking lot and started following me. I didn't think too much about it, but I kept an eye on it. The truck started tailgating me, so I ran a red light as I made a turn on the street that takes me home. My alarm started going off when the truck ran the red light as well, so I sped up, going about 75 miles per hour in a 35 street. I drove fast enough to lose him. As I got closer to my house, I remembered that I had to cross some train tracks. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's nothing but the truth. As I got closer to the tracks, the wings started going down, indicating that a train was coming through. I hoped that it would be the metro, but it turned out to be the train, so I stopped, waiting for the train to pass, thinking I had lost the truck. Not more than a minute passed when I looked in my rearview mirror, and I noticed the truck driving towards me. He stopped about a foot behind my car, and I finally got a good look at him. He was a white male, around his late fifties. He had a trucker's hat and was drinking a beer. I knew right then and there that I had to make a run for it. So I made a U-turn and sped off in the same direction I came from. I drove to another street and parked outside a bar. There were people outside, so I felt somewhat safe. I waited for about five minutes and decided to drive back home. So I finally made it back to the street that took me home. There was an old school about 100 feet from where I had turned, and to my unlucky surprise, the same truck came out of the school's parking lot and started tailgating me once again. This time I got home and parked in my driveway, and the truck passed across the street. I sat inside my car for about two minutes and decided that if this guy was going to do something, that it was time to confront him. So I put my car keys in between my knuckles and got out of the car and just stared at the guy. He stared back for about one minute. I should probably mention that about two weeks earlier I went out to my car to get my wife's phone and I noticed a guy dragging a big black plastic bag from the house across the street to the trunk of his car. I hid behind my car, but he noticed me. He hurried up and got in his car and left. I was speechless, but I didn't call the police because I thought maybe it's not what it seems, and tried to forget about it. Anyhow, the truck was parked in the exact same spot that the guy with the bag was parked before. We stared at each other, and eventually he drove off. I told my wife everything that happened. We've moved ever since for unrelated reasons. And even though it was one of the scariest nights of my life, I'm glad it happened, because it somehow made me realize what it's like to be a father. I was ready to defend my wife and son no matter what. As for the head, I never found out if it was real or not, or even if the three incidents are related. Hey everyone, Hellfraser here, and thank you very much for listening to Subscriber Stories 31. I'd like to say thank you very much to and for everyone who sent their stories in. Uh, interestingly, stories 1 and 2 were by the same author, and stories 3 and 4 were also by the same author. Just in case anyone would like to know that. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm afraid, well, bad news first. Uh, the 30 stories video I had planned, I'm pushing that way, way back. It's not going to be next week. I can't even give you a date on when it might be up, because I just can't do it right now. I can still do the regular videos because they're shorter, they're quicker to make, but I just can't record 30 stories at the moment, there's just no way it's going to happen. So I'm very sorry about that, and I'll, I'll do it as soon as I'm able to. And can I just add, in relation to that story that took place in the church, uh, if you're ever in a situation where someone's making you feel uncomfortable, please, please remember, it's much better to have some people you're probably never going to see again think you're a little nuts for making a scene, than it is to be dragged along by some creepy dude who quite clearly wants to have his way with you. Not everyone can be as lucky as the girl was in that story. 
and many people aren't, unfortunately. Okay, and with that, I think we're going to wrap up here for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.